Shalom. First and foremost, I would like to give all praises to Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai Bahashem Haraka Kodash Mama. Double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone and the elders. Double honors to my elder as well, Aherawan Ban Yasha'ala of the Lions Day Camp here in Jacksonville, Florida. And salutations to the fellow Akim, Awafim, and children that believe in truth and in sincerity. It's your brother, I thank y'all. Look back to you with another lesson. And Yahweh is edifying. And I want to start off in the book of Psalms, chapter 47. It's a quick read, it's only nine verses. It says, Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shah, the king of the earth. All right. <clears throat> to the chief musician, a psalm for the sons of Korah. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah with the voice of triumph. For the Lord most high is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. Right. You know, and it's possessive. All right. And this is how you know that the Lord is only dealing with one group of people and one nation of people. And that's the nation of Israel. You so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans and those of the speckled bird who may look like the other nations, but bear the same spirit as such. All right. Your Lord is terrible. All right. And he has his only begotten son. All right. Yahweh Shai as well, man. All right. Who what? He's going to rule the earth. Things are going to be subdued up under his feet. All right. Um, you know, ultimately, our people don't have, you know, they run after the fleshly things and they don't see that the spiritual things is what benefit us more. And is what's going to benefit us more as our heavenly father, all right, and his only begotten son, all right, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls JC, all right, whose name means what? He delivers, Yahweh Shai, he delivers, and the heavenly father, Yahweh, all right, well, Yahweh Shai, he makes intercessions for us, all right, in the heavenly, I mean, in, in, in the Shemayims, all right, in the heavenly kingdom, man, all right, and he's the only God that exists. So what he shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet, man. That's what hears the faith and the patience of the saints, man. And that's what we waiting on. It's Revelations chapter 13, verse 9 and 10. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and and the faith of the saints, man. And that's ultimately what's being done. All right. We see that according to prophecy, how the Lord is turning our captivity back right before our eyes, man. All right. So if you have an ear to hear the prophecies, the, the scriptures that's being spoken. All right. All right. Or, or the eyes to see. All right. You'll know what? That those who led us into captivity. These heathen nations, especially the ambassador of the heathen, the so-called so Caucasian race, which is the nation of Edom, the descendants of Esau. All right. They're ultimately going to go into captivity. All right. Just as they're um, as they're uh, as they dropped the bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki and made all these nations uh, take put their allegiance to the beast, that system that they set up. All right. The beast that was healed. That's the same way they are going out. All right. Um, in war. All right. And ultimately is going to lead them to what? Slavery. All right. Their condemnation, their destruction. All right. Because he what? He loved blood. So what? The world is ultimately going to come to the conclusion of warring no more. As the scriptures say, man, when we get in the kingdom, the world is not going to war anymore. You know, roughly paraphrasing. So he's he's going into captivity, man. And that's the patience and the faith of the saints, man. Thus saith the Lord. So just going back to Psalms 47. How these, hey, he shall subdue the people under us, man. That's possessive, man. Under us, the nation of Israel. All right. And it's going to be starting with the elect, 144,000 men, 12,000 men from each tribe and the one third men, women and children that the Lord's going to save from the said perils, man, because destruction is on its way. And the nations under our feet. 
He shall choose our inheritance for us, the excellency of Jacob, whom he loved, Salah, right? You know, Jacob, who later wrestled with an angel and changed his name to Israel and begot the 12 tribes, all right? So if you're not a part of those 12 tribes, you're not a, a, a Israelite, and it's all according to the seed of your fathers, all right? So again, we have uh, the speckled bird, those who look like other nations, but bear the same spirit as such. All right. But the point here is what he go choose our inheritance for us, man, is already chosen due to the promises that he gave to our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Man. All right. Verse five, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is going up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Sing praises, sing praises unto our king. Sing praises, all right? And that's why we call upon the true names of the Heavenly Father and most importantly, His only begotten Son because through Him is how we can even make intercessions to the Heavenly Father, all right? The Lord chose not to deal with us, uh, uh, you know, directly, but through His Son, all right? For Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is the King of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai reigneth over the heathen. God sitteth upon the throne of his holiness. The princes of the people are gathered together, even the people of the power of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong unto Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. He is greatly exalted, man. And that's what the whole world will come to the conclusion of, man, that what the Lord has done good things for them. Them being what the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, the Israelites, according to the Bible. All right, because what he's making the whole earth go into a array. All right, in the state of war, from World War One to World War Two, all right, um, to now, all right, as the first and the second world has passed, and the third world cometh quickly, and that's what we're in. All right, we're in the times of the end. All right, but what our people don't see that because they don't understand the spiritual things. They're caught up in the fleshly things. You know, that's why our people have to understand the spiritual things more than the fleshly things, because it's going to benefit them more in the long run. All right. Because this is not our rest, according to Micah chapter two and verse 10. All right. We ultimately have to rise and depart from this place, not physically, but spiritually. All right. Because this is not the end all be all. This is not life. This is an illusion. And this is Hebrews chapter two and verse eight. This is prison planet. All right, we're here to acknowledge our offense before the Lord destroys this place. All right, those who don't acknowledge their offense is going to get wiped out. All right, without remedy. All right, and you're going to you, 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 know you erred because you have been warned. It's just that the people are caught up into what the fleshly things which are so enticing. Right. And it's all the wits of what the heavenly father, man, the, 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 the Lord put in the world in their hearts. This is Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 8. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. Right. That's already spoken as it is already written. All right. So we already got the victory. Being that what our big brother, our king, Yahweh Shai, he's sitting on the right hand side of the heavenly father, man, on the throne. All right. But our people don't understand that because they don't understand the spiritual things, the, the, the weightier matters. For in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. Right, ain't nothing left, there's nothing that is not put under him. But everybody think they have a, 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 a YOLO lifestyle, all right? You only live once, uh, they can do as they will, all right? But according to Proverbs 20 and 24, man's going of the Lord, man. It's if you're doing things to your own pleasure, all right? You know, um, and not seeking out your spiritual welfare, you're 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 being hoodwinked, you're being bamboozled to what you're really here and supposed to be doing, pertaining to this flesh, pertaining to the spirit, pertaining to this uh temporal life that the Lord gave you. Again, this is prison planet. Our people are here to acknowledge the offense of the Heavenly Father, man. All right, before he destroys this place off the face of the earth, being Babylon, America. His second death, 
the lake of fire is going to end up being. That's the scriptures say. So this is back in Hebrews 2 and 8. For he, for in, I'll read it from the top. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all in subjection under him. He left nothing that is not put under him, right? He left nothing that is not put up under, put, put under him. All right. But you would think and look at the state of the world today and think that the Lord ain't controlling nothing. Look at all the wickedness going on. All right. Let me go join in. All right. Well, you'll be a fool to do so. But now we see not yet all things put under him, right? Verse 9, but we see Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of Yahweh should taste death for every man, man. And white, that's how he ends up being what? The intercessions for our people. All right, but it's not to what? For us to crucify him afresh daily and to continue to, 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 to continue in sin and say, hell with it, the Lord died for us. To do to eat pork, to eat uh, uh, shrimp, crab, and lobster, to um, do abominable things, commit adultery, all right, um, sodomy, all right, all, all type of uh, wickedness here in America, all right. He didn't sanction us to do so, especially being that he put his life on the line for us, all right. If you was to put your life down on the line for someone, and you just little simple man, you will want somebody to honor and be honorable. Uh, to a certain aspect as well, all right? What more so than the heavenly father, man, all right? And his, own, and his son, all right? You're, you're, you're the, the king of Israel, all right? But that's a, the mindset of our people, all right? What, they go con continue to crucify the Lord afresh daily, all right? Pertaining to two-thirds of our people because they're dismayed. They don't understand the spiritual matters, all right? The weightier matters, the things that's ultimately important. And this is Malachi chapter one and verse one, and it's, it's titled Yahweh's, all right, God's love for Jacob, all right, for Israel. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord, Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Right, that's what two thirds of our people say. The Lord don't love us. You know, I don't want to hear, hear that word. I don't hear that true. And that, ain't, that, book, that book ain't real, stuff like that, you know, because they look at the state of the world that is in, you know, um, when you tell them that, hey, you kings, you princesses, all right, it sound cliche to them. They tired of hearing it. They lost patience. So they say, what, where has thou loved us? But not Esau, was not Esau Jacob's brother, right? That's what they got to understand. They got to understand the spiritual uh, timeline of things, how this began and how it ultimately go in and how we in the betwixt of a thing. We in the middle, all right, but we're at the latter end of it to where what? We're coming upon the ending of a, of a thing, all right? Ending of an age to where what? Going back into Genesis uh, 25, all right? When uh, Rebecca was born with the twins, uh, Jacob and Esau, all right, two nations were in her womb. It's Genesis 25 and 25. Just get back to, you know, quick point, back to the basics. And the first came out red all over, all over like a hairy garment. And they call his name Esau, right? And after that came his, his brother out. And, he, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel. His name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when she bare them. All right. So ultimately, the point was what? You know, the first came out red and hairy as a furry garment. And later, Jacob came on holding his heels because it was going to be symbolic in Second Ezra chapter 6 and verse 8. All right. That the, at the end. All right. Spiritually. Because it was told to Rebecca that what? The eldest is going to serve the young. And the first is the eldest. That's the firstborn. So the Lord did something different. Esau is ruling right now. All right. That's why the scriptures speak on what? You see servants upon horses. All right. 
you know, representing that uh, famous statue of, uh, what is his name? Um, Jackson, Andrew Jackson. All right, and he had a gadite. All right, he had a gadite on the side walking. All right, and, 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 and the so called Negro on the other side, I believe, you know, slaves while he was on a horse. That's a, a known famous statue. The servants upon horses when he's the servant. This is like Ezra chapter six and verse eight. And he said unto me from Abraham unto Isaac. Right. Because the, 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 the again, the promises went from Abraham, not in all uh, the sons of Abraham is the sons of the promise. But in Isaac shall the seed be called right. Roughly paraphrase. You know, it's not from Abraham to Ishmael. All right. So. The cobblestone and the Muslim, that's going to get burnt up here in America. All right. But from Abraham to Isaac and to Jacob, all right, is where the promise is going to lie. And this is the second Ezra chapter six, verse eight. And he said unto me from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob hands held first the hill of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. The hand of man is betwixt the hill and the hand. <laughs> Other questions, Ezra's asked thou not, man. right? Because it was the Lord hand more than likely in betwixt, all right? Making intercessions or ultimately setting that that up. That's how our people have to have the understanding of how this is going to end, all right? They have to understand prophecy, but two-thirds of our people are not going to adhere to prophecy. They're not going to subscribe to this truth, all right? But those who listening and learning, man, we got a, we got a gift, all right? We got a blessing, you know, um, the unction to, to 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 know all things, all right, and to see, you know, I seek out our spiritual welfare, all right, seek out salvation. But it's back in Malachi chapter one, and I'll jump back to the point. Verse two, I have loved you, saith the Lord, yet ye say, wherein thou hast loved us, was not Esau Jacob's brother, right? That's why the Lord set it up that way. Saith the Lord, yet I love Jacob. And I hated Esau, right? All right. The first shall be last and the last shall be first. All right. You know, um, Lazarus, the poor man, is ultimately what Jacob represent. We go be found in Abraham's bosom. All right. In, in the kingdom. With what? Health and wealth. The brooks and honey. And it says in three again, and I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness, man. And that's what the Lord is doing at this very moment. All right. Laying his mountains, his governments and his heritage waste, man. All right. For the dragons of the of the wilderness, man, exposing his damn devil, showing him that he's the basis of men. All right. He, he, he wasn't this the man that was ruling the earth. Right, because he had the power of the sword, man. He had his blessing by way of the heavenly father, and now the Lord is not with him. This is verse 4. Whereas Edom said, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Right, and that's ultimately what they did through the times of Herod. All right, and our, uh, our, our big brother, Yahweh Shai. All right, as he went to seek out to build the desolate places. That was his, uh, you know, he was had the Trump mindset, make a, Make 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 Edom great again. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness, and the people against whom the Lord have indignation forever, man. Right. Alright, Amalek, he's go um war with them from generation to generation. Alright, that's a tribe within Edom. Alright, the Lord is not with this this nation of people. They can't be grafted into the olive tree, they can't be saved. All right. They're the wicked. All right. And that's ultimately what how our people are missing their uh, they missing the mark, man, by, by a big margin, by, you know, taking hold of the flesh and upholding fleshly things more than the spiritual. because the spiritual outweighs it far more. This is Hebrews. Chapter 11. In verse 3, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, 
so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear, man, right? All right, this is way more spiritual things, you know, than it is the fleshly things of the eye. All right, it's more of us than it is them. The uh, believe that was Elijah against the prophets of Baal, all right? You know, but hey, our people, what, they get stuck at the fleshly things, you know, like the heathen. You know, they get stuck on the astrology, the horoscopes, the moon and stars, all right, as the heathen, man. They're dismayed as the heathen. Um, You know, um, I believe that's quoted in Jeremiah chapter 10 and verse 2, all right? It goes into Christmas, but it also goes in how our people are dismayed just as the heathen, man, because the heathen will worship the moon, the stars, and be all in awe, but our people have to understand that they can surpass that. They heavenly father is the one who created this these things. All right. And the powers and the powers that was with them. But this is Psalms 8 and verse 1. To the chief magician upon Giddeth, a psalm of David. O Lord, our, our Lord, Shai, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and suckling hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man? Thou visiteth him, for thou hast made him a little lord than the angels and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yeah, and the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the seas. Our Lord, our Lord. How excellent is thy name in all the earth, man. Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. And we got those names. We seek them out. We did the study, the research, and we call upon those names, man. Even knowing what our, our angel Raphael take those uh, prayers, all right, with those names and make intercessions as well, man. So what, man? Our power is great. All right, we can, you, our, our people to get stuck at the horoscopes and the worshiping of everything, you know, getting tossed to, you know, getting tossed to and from, from every wind of doctrine, you know, when I heavenly father creating all, created all these things, man, all we have to do is kiss the sun, you know, lest he be angry. But I end off with a couple more scriptures and this is the book of first Peter chapter three and verse 22. Yaharash's artist lesson was edifying. Who is going? All right, it says, which sometimes were disobedient once the long suffering Yahweh waited in the day of no days of Noah while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water right when the Lord destroyed the earth back then in the times of Noah. Noah's sons. All right, and um, they survived. All right, Noah and eight souls. The light figure one or two, even baptism, doth also now save us, not putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by the resurrection of Yahweh Shai, right? Amashiach, right? All right, we cleanse through the washing of the word, ultimately. All right. Um, though you wash yourself with nitri, all right, which was a cleansing agent back in back then. All right. You ultimately cleanse by, you know, submerging yourself with this truth, studying, seeking these things out. Verse 22, who is going into heaven and is on the right hand of Yahweh. Angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. It's first Peter four and one for as much then as Yahweh Shah Hamashiach have suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind for he that have suffered in the flesh have ceased from sin. Right. 
you know, so we have to understand that we, you know, and, and come to the raps that we got to suffer, you know, um, if we we're hoping to be of the hopefully elect, man. And the, and the Lord's anointed, man, because no servant is greater than his master. And the Lord ultimately went through the suffering. So our suffering is no match to what he went through. All right. So this what his his burden is light, the scriptures say, you know. So we cease from sin as well. The more we get closer to the end, you know, and, and, and the more we increase our faith, increase our learning. And the more we teach and continue to teach man so. All right, until until the end. So we got to arm ourselves with that same mind, being stoic, man, willing to go through the straits and continue to go through the straits, man, not wavering. All right. Knowing that it's going to yield the most uh, profitable substance, man, and that's salvation. All right. New bodies. Yahweh Ratazada's lesson was edifying. Shalom. Ahabatah. And DTA until the next one.